So hi, my name is uh, Mr. McKellar. I am the uh, teaching professor here at uh, Gannon University. I am also the cyber engineering coordinator. And I'd like to explain a little bit more about what cyber engineering is here at Gannon, okay? So cyber engineering is basically the blends of cybersecurity and computer engineering with secure products. These secure products are like autonomous vehicles, uh, smart products, healthcare products, Department of Defense, anything that's securing our changing world right now. And if you think about it, cyber engineering is one of the triads here at Gannon for our uh, cyber ecosystem. So computer engineering is basically the blending of electrical engineering and software engineering. And this is where you work with uh, electrical engineers and circuits and, and understanding the architecture of the hardware. And then also the software side is, is understanding how to drive these microcomputers, these microcontrollers, these microprocessors to do certain things for embedded products. Cybersecurity is basically the practice of protecting critical systems, the information within the system, the information transferring in and out of the system, and it's blended with information technology. Now those technologies um, help against network threats and applications and in securing the threats from inside and outside our organization. Cybersecurity is the other leg of our triad. So you think about cyber engineering and then cybersecurity. Then lastly, we have to have the final leg, which is the standards, the policies, the laws, the enforcement of the laws, and the ethics applied by the companies, industries, governments, okay? So where the blending of cybersecurity and cyber engineering is, is basically in the policies and the techniques they use to secure the data coming in and out of the system. So even if I have cyber engineering and I had this little microcontroller that's running uh, on your vehicle, for instance, and this vehicle is communicating to another vehicle, that needs to be secured and that information needs to have, keep the integrity and the information in a timely fashion uh, clean. Our society is in a, in a growth spurt of technology. Uh, you have cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Polkadot. Um, you look at autonomous vehicles, trains, planes, and automobiles, okay? Um, even the rocket ships come down landing automatically, okay? That is huge controls, and guess what? That is real-time uh, embedded systems, cyber engineering. You have uh, robotics all over the place, so whether it's in your home cleaning or robotics that are basically uh, in the industrial robotics that they use low level programming. So that's, that's your cyber engineering, cyber security. Exploration, um, how do we go to places we can't go to? Well, we send in drones. Well, guess what the drones are made from? Embedded controllers, sensors, actuators, and you have basically uh, the core would be the cyber engineering person. Um, Research. Well, if you've been to Shark Week, you saw how they do research by tracking a shark with an autonomous sub. Oh my gosh, you know, that was like, woo, that was cool. So guess what? You have electrical engineers, you have mechanical engineers, and you have those cyber engineers that basically are down there writing the software to do this kinds of stuff. That's the cool stuff. Uh, you look at uh, medical systems. Uh, transplants of, of organs that are being controlled by microcontrollers, uh, prosthetics that have microcontrollers. There you're down, once again, down to the bowels of how to handle uh, the senses and, and the actuators to control things so we have a better quality of life. Uh, smart cities, transportation hubs, uh, power, safety, uh, all over the place. Our defense department is using this technology all over the place. So it's almost everything has a digital footprint now in a digital footprint being a microprocessor or microcontroller. So currently, right now, there's about 15 billion IoT type devices in the world, and there's only like 8.6 billion and 1. Point billion mobile products and PCs. So you can see the growth is already there, but in 2035, it's gonna get up towards a trillion devices. Who is going to secure these devices? Who is going to program these devices? Who's designing these systems? Well, it's just not one technology, but the glue is that cyber engineer. That's the one that basically pulls all this together. So the student's gonna be exposed to electric, basic electrical engineering. They understand uh, you know, digital, they're gonna understand how to do circuits, uh, understanding how to do wiring, how to do the measurements, how to use the certain tools. 
Then they're going to be also uh, introduced or exposed to networking strategies in the computer science department so they understand some of the policies and, and how to set up networks and how to make them secure. And then they get into a lot of software. So yes, it looks like, okay, basic coding, but the thing is though, it's not the coding that they're also learning or the structures of all this stuff. You can learn that stuff. So the what's and the, and the how to do things come from other programs. But here again, and what we try to teach you is, is why do we do it and when do we do it? And that is the educational part of teaching this kind of stuff. So that's what the student's going to have. So, so not only do we have these labs, some of these labs are now in our new IHAC building. And this IHAC building is supposed to be intelligent, okay, health and cyber knowledge. So what we do with the IHAC building is that we're starting to make more uh, smarter devices like uh, a student in our program. Once they get through the basics, they can now go farther deeper into the embedded world, or they can get artificial intelligence, okay? Or they can go more towards the networking side, more secure networking uh, for, this, uh, for this work. And, and that's why we've married up with some of the um, physical therapists who bring in the health side, and our students get to blend a little bit of that in, even though it's not maybe not high tech, but they're making them think how to solve problems and how to communicate with people who don't talk their language, basically, technical language. This, this, this system is really geared up for a very inquisitive type student, a student that basically wants to go deeper into the, uh, the uh, computing technical field and down to the depths of it and understanding how things are put together. So the student will be inquisitive, not just how to build these electronic devices and how to program them, but how to use them in research fields like uh, in environmental, uh, exploration like going out in space or going down to the depths of the ocean how do we do all this with uh, with these kinds of computers and keeping that data secure why would you want to come to Gannon versus anywhere else we're fluid we're small we're pointed we want to make sure that you get the latest technology where we're building our own little pedagogical type of uh, device that will swap in all kinds of little hardware yet it's autonomous and we get to use that through all our classes so we're growing in the focus of how we educate versus how we teach.